Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I claim to be smartest man on earth.ca or world smartest man.ca. Now you find out why. You know, when it dawned on me, I might be the world's smartest man, smartest man on earth. I went searching the websites and I found that no one had registered those names. In the 20 years that the internet's been in existence, no one has put up smartest man on earth or world's smartest man site. So I got them. Dot CA from Canada. So how could I possibly claim that? Well, let's face it. If you saw the same warrior exiting the arena triumphant every time, you'd kind of want to bet that he's probably the toughest warrior on the block, right? And if you see the smartest scientist winning bet after bet after bet, you probably have to bet he might be the smartest man on the block. Now, that's until you realize that the first guy had a gun and the others didn't. And you realize that I have game theory and the others do not. After in the last year of my degree in systems engineering, I took the mathematics of gambling course at Carleton University, the only one of its kind in the country. Became so good a gambler, I became a professional gambler for the next 40 years. And at the same time, I became teaching assistant of the mathematics of gambling course at Carleton. And in 1975, I ran the world's first university student card counting team in Las Vegas. So. Um, I ran the biggest casinos ever busted in Canadian history, 28 table underground game, Project Robin Hood in Ottawa, and uh, probably the biggest raid in Quebec as well. And uh, after those raids, I was forced to go down to the United States. And there I had to play poker to make my living. And I used to play at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, the site of the movie Rounders, where Matt Damon is in the movie with room with the chandeliers. Well, remember, every poker room has their guy they call the professor. But I was called the professor at the poker room at the Taj Mahal, Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. So, if you go to johntermel.com slash Taj Professor, you will get an index of my seven instructional videos on how to play better hold'em. If you go to johntermell.com slash inverts, I have what I call the missing dimension in mathematics. Something that was missed in early math that has made it almost impossible for most people to be any good at math. And if you go read my inverts page, I bet you you come back better at math. Now, to give you an idea of how I might be the only one who thinks that far outside the box, you all know about computer cheating and how that's done. Well, I made a proposition to the Ontario Election Commission, and I said that can be completely eliminated if you put a serial number on the ballot and you let me take away a carbon copy. So I can then look online where you're going to post the numbers and the votes to make sure my vote was registered properly. And in that way, short of having dead people voting, they can't fraudulently misrepresent or miscount my vote or anybody's vote if they post all the serial numbers and picked at random at online with the votes beside them. So that is how a no fraud ballot, that, that's the page, can solve the problem. Well, the Ontario Commission said, no, no, it gives up too much secrecy for you to be able to find out how you voted. So we don't want to have a no fraud ballot. But that's how using game theory can allow you to jump to simple solutions to really big problems. Can't have computer fraud at all anymore. So some interesting effects of my gambling career were the big raids. And uh, through those big raids, I got tired of being raided and I ran for parliament. And in my first election, people asked me about inflation and said, how come, you know, money inflates? I said, how come my casino chip over here does not inflate and the government chip does inflate? Same hardware. Must be a software problem. I did that line on Dragon's Den and they cut out the punchline, so I sued them. Check that on YouTube.
Dragon's Den in Turmel. So I said, wow, you mean all we got to do to get out of our massive debts is get access to the Bank of Canada's computer like the chartered banks do? So we can borrow some Bank of Canada money interest free like the chartered banks do? And so we can pay off all our mortgages and interest bearing debts and student loans and credit cards with the Bank of Canada's loan. And then we all owe the Bank of Canada's one stable number and all payments go against principal. So that's, I said, wow, all we have to do is get to the Bank of Canada's computer. And if we get an account at the Bank of Canada's computer, interest free, our financial problems are all solved. Everybody's. Imagine if that had happened back in 1979. 36 years without these nightmare of debts and fighting over resources and wars, all caused fighting over not enough money. So that's why I ran for Parliament and why it's important that we try to get Bank of Canada accounts to replace our intermediary loan shark accounts. So I, in the last provincial election a few years ago, did a series of videos and you can YouTube for Termel and student vote playlist. And there you will get an explanation of what I'm about, what I want to do in 10 minutes that I explain to grade fours. And if you can't understand what I'm about after that, well, find yourself some kid in grade four to explain it to you. But in a nutshell, things I've done to try and get an interest-free Bank of Canada account is politics. I kept started running an election after election after election, bringing a blackjack table to the meetings and showing people how interest-free chips could bank the game. I even offered the Joe Clark government $100 billion worth of my casino terminal chips, as long as they're issued in exchange for labor and they didn't take that interest-free loan. But after, in 1997, I got into the Guinness Book of Records with 41 elections. And the guy with 39, well, he's now dead, so no one's going to crack that. And that was in the first 18 years. And in the next 18 years, I've now done another 45. This is a 46. I registered in the federal election yesterday so that I'm now a candidate in my 87th election. I've lost 85. One was called off, but it still counts. So I have two records in the Guinness Book of Records, one for most elections contested, and the one that the media love to focus on is most losses. So they can have headlines like, Super Loser Fails Again. Well, the joke is on them. I'll tell you in a few minutes. What else can I do to get an interest-free account? Well, if interest creates inflation of the chips, well, we know one thing. It certainly isn't what they taught us, okay? This is what they teach us, inflation. If you got a hundred bucks chasing a hundred units of stuff, they tell you inflation is an increase in the money chasing the stuff that causes the inflationary suit. Now, I discovered another possibility. If it's not an increase in the money and there is an inflationary shift, gee, where could the utter arrow be? Well, I'm the discoverer of the... Sh this is shift A over here. I call it shift A inflation. And I'm the discoverer of the other inflation. See if you can figure it out. I call shift B. And when I did that line on Dragon's Den, they cut that line out too. Said I, economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money supply. I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation. And they cut. So I sued them and got it on the video if you go see it. So that's what they've done to fraudulently make economics silly. It's a way of trying to pretend there's a way to pay back the interest 11 when they only printed 10. Now quickly, mortgage means death gamble. And it can be best explained in the theory of games. 10 guys put up their watches collateral. The banker lends them all 10 chips. Says, I want you all to come up with 11 at the end of the game. You get your watches back. Nine guys come out at the end of the game. It's like a pump house, lending them all 10 liters of liquidity, dumping it in the economic pool, and everybody's got to come out with 11. Well, nine guys come out with 11, go to the pump house, get their watch back. The 10th guy, none left. Everybody else used his principal to pay their interest 
in the Morgage death gamble, so he can't pay the pump house. So the pump house seizes his watch. So you have the same chips chasing less watches after foreclosure. Shift B, inflation. That I discovered. Now, after 36 years of propounding this on the internet, if you do a search for shift B inflation, you'll find out no one else on the planet teaches the other possibility. Not one other monetary reformer can counter the argument that increasing the money supply by paying people with paychecks will cause inflation like I can. Because in, ni in the uh, 1980s, six Argentine provinces started paying all their employees with provincial bonds instead of cash. And the government decried, and the Bank of uh, um, Argentina decried all these provincial currencies coming into circulation. Inflation would go up. And instead, inflation went from 1,000% down to 36%. Because if you have more money in circulation, you got less foreclosures and less shift the inflation, if that's what's really going on. So Argentina proves that adding more money into circulation reduces inflation. Cute, eh? And they got you conned into believing it's shift A, the opposite. So that is my major claim to fame for being the smartest man on earth. In the last 36 years, I'm the only person who figured out there could be another shift not just the one you're talking about. Instead of more chips in front of your face, it could be disappearing collateral behind your back. And I'm the only person on the whole planet who figured that out. Now, another interesting thing. The Bible. Jesus. His most quoted expression in the Bible. Seven times in all of Scripture. Twice in Matthew, twice in Luke, once in Mark, once in Thomas, once in Peter, Apocalypse. This one line, well, I found a differential equation in it. And it's out of the parable. It's Matthew where they ask him, Jesus, why do you speak in parables so they don't understand your message? And he said, I speak in parables because to those who have abundance will more be given. From those who have no abundance, even what they have will be taken away. That's why I speak in parables, so they don't understand. For they'll be forever hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing. But you've been given the chance to see the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Well, what the heck does to those who have abundance will more be given? And from those who have no abundance, even what they have will be taken away, mean! Seven times it's mentioned in scriptures, and nobody knows what it means. Well, I figured out that's a differential equation. And I challenged anybody in the world to figure it out, too. And one University of Texas science student figured it out, too. So, anyway, that is another claim to fame. Now, there's a few more. I got involved in politics. That was to basically get my Bank of Canada account. I started picketing against banks and protesting, and I would go picket the Bank of Canada every Thursday in the early 1980s, for five years when they hoisted the interest rates during Pierre Trudeau's 22% crushing years. And then I'd go up to Parliament Hill for the other hour and protest in front of Parliament. So I became known as Canada's interest rate protester, bank protester. And I helped people stall their foreclosures by using kits through the courts. And I became known as bank fighter extraordinaire because if a criminal can stall, stall, stall by appealing, 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 and I've learned the criminal courts by being charged so often for gambling, why couldn't a per poor person stall, stall, stall his foreclosure by appealing, 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 and my longest stall was 33 months. Not bad, rent free before being kicked out. Anyway, that's how it works. So that was my protesting as well. I mean, I went to all the demonstrations. I was at the battle in Seattle. I was in Washington, Philadelphia, Quebec City with my, and including one of my favorites, which was at the um, Jubilee 2000. Remember that? In 2000, the whole world were together to break the chains of debt. All right? And I was one of the speakers. And notice my sign doesn't say abolish debt. It says abolish debt growth. But interesting, debt. 
So anyway, it ends up that Jesus was not a sin fighter. He was a debt fighter. And in the Our Father, the original Our Father was forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And the banksters changed it to forgive us our sins. Well, Ezekiel said, hey, atone, do right, repent, and your sins are forgotten. He promises God. So why would Jesus ask, you to ask for forgiveness of sins when it's promised, when you do good? It's forgiveness of debts, which is why Jesus took a whip to the bankers in the only expression of violence in his criminal record for which he ended up on the cross. I believe he escaped the cross. Story with Pilate, another story. Nevertheless, that is cracking Jesus' differential equation because to those who have abundance will more be given is how the bank account works. If you have positive abundance, they give you more. And if you're negative, they take some away. Well, how can you take away from people who got nothing? Only in a debt system. So Jesus was describing debts and positives that grow with interest when he said, I speak in parables so they don't really get it, but they crucify me really fast. Because to those who have abundance, positive, they'll get more. And from those who don't have anything at all, they're going to even take it, take it away. And I'm in slavery in those days. And so they'll never get it. And it's kind of funny because in the years I've been pushing, abolishing interest rates, so few people have gotten it. So mammon is hypnotic, mammon's mems. But that is the political stuff that I've done. Then I went into the courts and I started showing the people how to resist their foreclosures. Then I started attacking the Bank of Canada. I said, if it's illegal to charge a fee for the privilege of participating in a gamble, it's illegal to charge interest for the privilege of participating in the death gamble. Took those charges to the Supreme Court. JohnTurnell.com slash SCC3 will tell you those stories. And uh, finally, the last thing you can do if the courts and the politics don't work you got to do it yourself. You have to set up your own currency system, your own time-based money, so that you can do trade with other people around you, even if you got no money. So in 1984, I heard of a software written by Michael Linton out in BC, had a nice network of people who were trading with interest-free credits. Uh, I think it was 12 to the dollar, 12 green dollars to the hour. And I said, well, what do you need? And he said, well, I want to, you know, produce a software package to spread to the world. And I sent them 20 Gs in those days, and he did it. And Let's got spread around the world and is now a very, very famous software still being talked about when Greece crashed. Anytime anybody crashes, they're now talking about the Let's software when they set up their time banks and do trade with us. So I did that. And then in 1989, I got invited to go to the United Nations because I had run for prime minister in 1993 of Canada. And that's because I had been busted with the biggest casino. I had made a million dollars. I had to spend it before they took it away. So I founded a political party, ran for prime minister, and blew all the money. More candidates in the Greens, 80. But then in 1993, seven years later, at the Millennium Declaration, I was allowed to go to the UN because I'd been the leader of a political party, a non-government organization. When I got there, people invited me to do a talk on the lead system about banking in the future because one of the courts of the committees had belonged to a Let's in Australia, a single mother, and it had helped her. Remember, you can log on what nights you can double duty babysit each other's kids and pay each other with one hour bills, even when you're broke. And that way, a mechanic can take three hours per hour, a dentist can take six hours per hour, and a support network grows around a babysitting nucleus. So let systems spread around the world and are still prevalent when people want to come up with a mutual credit system. So at the United Nations, I guess I made enough of an impact that in the newspaper, they had the pictures of the world leaders with Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, the King of Saudi Arabia, and John Turmel was there too. But I always bring my signs, which is Jesus, Nehemiah, and Muhammad said, do not lend your money at interest. And the other one said, don't cancel debt. Let's cancel debt growth. So an impact at the UN was a great story, and it made the United, sorry, the Millennium Declaration, Resolution C6 for a time-based currency to restructure the global financial architecture. It should have said interest-free unilets, 
but the censors cut out those two words. But they left in time-based currency, which is important. Because the moment your time becomes collateral at the bank, instead of gold, the time standard of money, instead of the gold standard of money, you become empowered. But right now, why your time ain't worth anything at the bank, and a piece of gold is, well, that's what you're existing in right now. But all we got to do is get the time standard of money, and that way your time at labor becomes the collateral for your loyalty. So, that was the United Nations. They've never done it. But every time there's been a crash, they've always set up wet systems. There have been so many recently in Argentina in the 80s, they crashed. The six provincial um, provinces issued their own money and solved the problem. In 2000, they crashed again. And this time, uh, another state did. Plus, they started up a mil seven million member creditos, let's time barter system across the country. And that helped them get out of debt. And as soon as the banks opened their doors to say, we'll loan shark to you again, they all put away their local currency and ran back to the loan sharks. And in the 1990s, Russia, when they crashed, 750 republic and local governments started their own local bond currencies, where you basically use small denomination bonds to pay people, and they can pay their taxes with them. And then 25,000 corporations issued their own ruble currencies. McDonald's rubles, Ford rubles, Chrysler rubles. Can't be counterfeited. And they all worked because everybody took everybody else's ruble. So there's proof that those kind of massive, large-scale community currencies can work. They have worked. So when Portugal crashed a few years ago, they said, we're going to pay employees one month a year in bonds. And now we've had the crash in Greece where they had plan B to set up a digital currency on the side. And then you have Scotland. They're having a referendum on whether they're going to have a Scott coin. And now you've got Jeremy Corbyn in the UK after their parliamentary debate on using the Bank of Canada for infrastructure. Now, back to the politics for just a minute. What's interesting is in 1984, I was a member of the Green Party when they founded. And then I was thrown out for advocating the let system. But then other Greens got the let screen dollar system time bank installed on the Green Party program by 1988. Then within four or five years later, someone took it off. Then in 2012, another resolution to use the Bank of Canada for interest-free loans to the government. Well, I want it to people too, but that's a good start. Now notice, there's now a motion by the Comer Group in court to get interest-free loans from the Bank of Canada too. Well, I asked for interest-free loans from the Bank of Canada in 1981. Imagine if we'd gotten it then. But what's sad is, what if Scotland gets it before we do? Well, this is your chance, this is your election to try and pull off something viral and neat and end up with your Bank of Canada account. So, you know how that works. Now, unique things. Well, I probably had more, the biggest raids in history. I've probably been arrested as a political candidate and taken away by the police more times in history. Because anytime uh, I'm excluded and they say, well, we don't want you to be able to come and try and score votes at our debate. I go take a seat and make them use the full force of the law, a man with a badge, to take me away. And the three times moderators tried to grab Jiu-Jitsu John, they all ended up on the floor. And, well, I had the oldest political blog on the internet. It started for me way back in 97. Uh, alt pen John hyphen Termel. And uh, finally, one of my neatest claims to fame for the kids out there is, in 2003, I made them drop 4,000 marijuana charges. I'm a herbalist, an advocate of getting people off cannabis by switching them on to juice and oil in particular. But back in 2003, the courts ruled that there had been a bad exemption for sick people. And an earlier decision had said, you have to come up with an exemption for sick people if you want to prohibit it for everybody. Well, when the court ruled, uh-oh, it's been a bad exemption, they had to drop the last 4,000 charges. And there it is, 4,000 charges dropped because there'd been a bad exemption. They didn't know about it. Well, in June 2015, at the Supreme Court of Canada, 
in the Smith decision, they declared that not letting people with tumors this big use cannabis oil to put on their big tumors, but forcing them to try and put dry bud on their tumors was a violation of their right. And you gotta admit, that's a pretty bad violation compared to 2003 when the exemption was judged deficient because they had one person per grower and three growers per garden, limited su supply. Here you've got misuse. So I am going into the highest court of Ontario tomorrow morning, or this morning now, and asking for them to drop my charges because in 2003, I went on Parliament Hill with seven pounds of marijuana, a life sentence supply. That's me being busted over there. Um, life sentence supply because I thought that they were going to be bringing back a new law once I knew the law was already dead. And they did call off the marijuana bill. And Parliament was pro rod and Parliament never brought back a law since the first one died. But the courts have pretended they brought it back to life and keep busting people. So that fight is going on tomorrow. I have 13 other appellants with me. And then on Tuesday the 22nd, I have three going into the Quebec Court of Appeal. And I'm planning others in all the other courts of appeal too. So could be a big event tomorrow on the marijuana front. Now, finally, I am going to, in my campaign, I'm going to use this as my cartoon, okay? I had the same cartoon in 1993. Who would you vote for? There's the Bank of Canada SysOp operator, and there's the Let's program that will give you an account that will let you cut checks to settle all your interest-bearing debts. And after that, all your payments to the SysOp go against your control. Now, you have a choice. You can vote for the monkey with the Let's program, or you can vote for the other guys who are going to go borrow at the banks to, quote, invest in all these places that need investment. So I think most people understand that the monkey with the let software is a far superior vote than the low-tech candidates who don't have any software. <laughs> so, oh, finally, you know the Occupy movement a few years ago? Well, I demonstrate all the time. Well, here was a picture of me being arrested, picking in the IMF World Bank with my favorite sign, Bankers starve third world babies. I once flashed David Rockefeller personally with that one at a Bilderberger meeting in 1983 before people knew Bilderbergers were a problem. But see this here? Remember the Occupy movements in the streets? Well, I'm alone there because this was in 1982 <laughs> when I was all alone. So that is basically the election. Right now, my opponents for the leadership are the Liberal, the Tory, the NDP, and the Green. We've got, you know, the Tory economist. We've got the NDP and the Green lawyers. And we've got the Liberal artsy. And you've got John the Engineer running. Now, you only need one guy with one eye in the land of the blind. I only have to be in there when I can end up Prime Minister, just because I'm a lot smarter than they are. And I have a lot more powerful technology at my command if you've caught the explanation to the great boys. So, why in the world? Now, at my site also, I'm gonna be posting a dream team, like I did in 2011, of candidates who would be most likely to install a let system. So I advise you to vote for them. And I hope by the end of the election to have a dream team of candidates and one in your riding so you can help vote for your own interest-free Bank of Canada account. Now, you know, things are pretty ugly and bad out there. And uh, now the only jobs opening up are security, you know, security in courthouses, security at airports are going to be, security at bus stations, security on buses soon. I mean, it's crazy and it's a complete waste of time, but it's necessary when you're going to war. And let's face it, even Harper's gotten us into a few wars. He's going to spend $56 billion on new warplanes to protect us from the, I don't know, polar bears in the north. Anyway, $56,000 million on warplanes. And, of course, the other three leaders aren't bringing that up. We're going to pay it, too. So imagine if we cancel that contract, what that could do for everybody. So we're facing that kind of a future. And so my program is actually so simple, it's explainable in two lines. 
I want no cops in gambling, sex, drugs, or rock and roll. And I want no interest on loans, pay cash or time, no dole. So everybody gets an interest-free account. The weaker players go negative. The stronger players go positive. And that's right out of the Bible. That's how Jesus' wet communes used to work. When he said, give your money to the rich and follow me, he, I mean to the poor, he said, give your money to my commune called the poor, the treasurer, and he'll front it out to the guys who will get out of debt and then come live with us. And that way, when the, later, if you're short, we'll get you out of debt. And that's why Jesus' anti-slavery communes were so resisted by the authorities who liked loan sharking. So that is available, and you can find most of this information at my homepage, where the near things have links. Or you can go to johntermel.com slash K-O-T-P, King of the Poppers, my videos. Now, why would I call myself King of the Poppers? Who in their right mind would want to be the king of the broke guys? Maybe the guy who wants to lead the broke guys out of their debts. That's my job. And if you look at what I've been doing for the last 36 years, trying to reprogram the bank's computers to liberate the debt slaves from their shackles, well, yeah, I've done a pretty good job, I think. I haven't won anything, but I've seen my let system spread around the world and that is i got invited to the u.n i bet i'm going to get three nobel prizes for my let's for my uh well it'll be priest once everybody's got a job who's fighting right so peace prize economics prize last one put it away that stupid science once the riddle is solved who needs prizes and then science for let's someday i hope so in a nutshell why haven't they shot me yet because I've been screaming my solution for world problems is global aspirin, ASA, amnesty, security, anonymity. So that, you gotta understand the numbers here. The Rothschild family have been in charge of the planet for the last 200 years with the most money and the most control. In just my career fighting banks, Back in 1981, when I asked to reprogram the bank's accounts to give interest-free accounts to starving kids in the deserts, <laughs> 17 million children a year were dying of poverty and another 23 million adults, minimum, 40 million a year, dying who shouldn't have to die if there was enough money to go around. And now, 30-some six years later, that's over 1.2 billion people who were born and not allowed to pay to survive because of one family. Can you imagine what hell's going to be like for them? Anyway, the point is, why haven't they shot me? Because I want to give everybody amnesty for any financially induced crime. If they paid you to do it, whether you're a banker or a torturer or whatever, forgive and forget. Security, here's your interest-free credit card at the sugar daddy bank in the sky. Go do something useful, go get an education, try and be productive and end up dying positive. And we'll have a potlatch because in the world of the future, there'll be no inheritance. You don't need your daddy's number on your scorecard. Your consumption registers against your card. And then when you come online, your production registers against your card. And when you die positive, like in the old native Canadian Indian days, they'd have a potlatch and they'd distribute all the excess goodies to everybody. We can do that with accounting now. So, and anonymity. The Rothschilds can change their name. Okay? Forgive, forget, and get along with the party in heaven. Except we've got to clean up. Fukushima decommissioned nuclear, all these incredibly degrading environmental things that are done because they're done the cheapest and we have no money can now be remedied, okay? So, ASA is probably the reason why it never shot me before. And you can find all my stuff online and I'll be adding more during the campaign. But the only way this is going to possibly have an effect on this is election is if you share and ask people to share the share. 
because it's incredible what a world full of people with one to five thousand friends would be able to do if they simply said if you want banking on earth as in heaven go check out the <laughs> smartest man on earth site smartest man on earth dot ca world smartest man dot ca running for prime minister of canada to install the lets at the bank of canada and give you your interest-free bank account and shut down the middleman